As with any piece of equipment, it's important that the people using it understand how to get the best out of it and how to carry out simple day-to-day -day maintenance. It's no different with a portable autoclave. This autoclave is single-walled and has a capacity of 39 litres. It is externally heated with a kerosene burner or an electric stove. This steriliser is suitable for harsh rural conditions without an electricity supply or running water. It's manually operated. When operated correctly, it provides safe, sterile products. The unit uses pressurized high temperature steam as a sterilizing agent. The system works by first heating water to produce steam. When boiling, steam is first flushed in order to evacuate the air in the chamber and load. Then the pressure is allowed to rise to the required pressure of 1.4 bar, which coincides with a temperature of 126 degrees Celsius. This sterilization temperature is maintained for 35 minutes. Finally, the steam is released and the pressure is reduced to that of the atmosphere. The lid can then be opened. The lid is left open. The heat of the autoclave and the load evaporates the moisture and helps in drying the load. So that's the principles. Now let's see in detail how to operate this autoclave correctly. First open the lid by turning the Bakelite wing nuts in a counterclockwise motion. Always undo two opposite wing nuts at the same time. Turn the lid counterclockwise and then lift the lid. Place it on wooden blocks to prevent the air vent pipe being damaged. Next, remove the inner container from the sterilizer. Pour clean water, distilled or demineralized water is preferred, into the sterilizer to a depth not less than 2 centimeters and not more than 2.5 centimeters. A groove indicates the correct level. Clean water can also be clean rainwater or water captured from the condensation of an air conditioner. If the water is hard, in other words, it causes scale. Make sure you use completely new water each time you use the autoclave. Place the inner container rack in the bottom of the container with the lip or edge side facing down. The purpose of this rack is to provide a space in the bottom of the container so that air and steam can circulate freely. The autoclave can now be loaded. The band on the sterilizing drums must be opened to allow steam into the drum. Place the load inside the inner container. Remember, it must not be overloaded, as the steam has to move freely and penetrate each pack. Textile packs should not be higher than half the height of the chamber. If a pack is too tall, divide the textile into two packs. This will ensure adequate steam penetration into the packs. In order to reduce moisture in the load, you can place a small towel or cloth on top of the packs to absorb any moisture which may drip down from the lid. As you face the unit, make sure that the air exhaust channel located inside the container is on the right-hand side of the container when it's placed in the unit. The reason is that when the cover is placed on the unit, the tube position matches with the channel and you can easily guide the air exhaust tube into the channel. The lid of the sterilizer can now be closed. When placing the cover on the unit, make sure that the flexible tube is inserted into the guide channel on the inside wall of the inner container. Turn the lid clockwise to engage the safety bracket 
and align the slots in the lid for the wing nuts. Make sure that the index alignment arrow on the cover aligns with the index line or arrow on the side of the autoclave. Now tighten the wing nuts on the cover evenly, always tightening down to opposite wing nuts at the same time. This will pull the lid down evenly and ensures a proper seal. Never use a wrench or any mechanical device to tighten the wing nuts. And never hammer or strike the wing nuts or lid when opening or closing. Next, place the stand and burner on a stable surface that is safe for firing the burner. Make sure that there's sufficient ventilation. But remember that the burner needs to be sheltered from the wind or fit a windshield. The air screw must be loose so that air can escape as kerosene is bored in. Unscrew the filler cap and make sure there is sufficient paraffin or kerosene in the tank. That is approximately three quarters full. Then replace the cap. Fill the preheater cup with methylated spirit or alcohol. Light the preheater. Now leave the burner alone. Do not fiddle with it. When the methylated spirit is almost burnt out, close the air screw and give a few strokes on the pump. The stove should light at the top of the burner. Have a match or lighter ready in case the stove does not light immediately. If the flame burns unevenly around the burner, the jet may be blocked. Wire cleaning needles or prickers can be used to reach into the flame and clean the jet. Always use the correct diameter pricker for the stove, 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. Bent pieces of wire, etc. will damage the fine jet. To reduce the height of the flame at the burner, loosen the air screw gradually. This releases some pressure and the flame will become smaller. To make the flame bigger, increase the pressure by gentle pumping. Do not over pump or the tank can become damaged. If the flame flares, release the pressure by opening the air screw and allow it to burn down. Before relighting the burner, always loosen the air screw to release any pressure present. The burner is now ready for use. To start heating the sterilizer, place it on the stand with the burner. Open the control valve by placing the valve lever in an upright position. If you placed cold water in the unit, it will take approximately 35 minutes before steam begins escaping from the control valve. Throughout the time the sterilizer is on the heater, keep checking the flame. When necessary, adjust the flame by loosening the air screw or gentle pumping. The steam generated at the bottom of the sterilizer will move around the outside of the container and then down through the packs in the container to the bottom and force the air from the bottom of the container up through the flexible air exhaust tube and out of the control valve. It is important that the steam is allowed to escape vigorously from the unit for at least seven minutes and you see a continuous flow of steam. This process of allowing steam to escape is called exhausting or air removal. 
it is essential to remove any air trapped in the unit and in the load. Once the air has been exhausted, you can close the control valve. With the control valve in the closed position, the pressure inside the sterilizer will rise. This is indicated on the pressure gauge. The sterilization period begins when the pressure gauge registers in the green sterilization band shown on the gauge. You can then reduce the heat as necessary to maintain this constant pressure. The control valve will regulate the pressure by regularly releasing steam. The sterilization range is 1.2 to 1.5 bar. Once the pressure gauge has reached the green, start timing the sterilization. Sterilization must continue for no less than 35 minutes. At the end of the sterilization period, turn off the heat source and move the lever on the control valve to an upright, vertical position so that steam is allowed to escape. To avoid touching the hot lever or being burnt by the escaping steam, use any object such as a pencil or forceps. When the lever is fully upward, the steam will escape at maximum. When the pressure gauge reaches zero, you can loosen the wing nuts. The wing nuts, side handles and top handle will be hot. So use pads when handling them. Loosen the wing nuts evenly by turning two opposite wing nuts counterclockwise at the same time. Having removed all the wing nuts, Turn the lid counterclockwise to free the safety catch and then lift the cover slightly. Leave the cover slightly open for about 10 minutes so that the remaining heat will help the leftover moisture on the load to evaporate. After 10 minutes, you can fully remove the lid. When removing the cover, always tilt it at an angle away from yourself or other people in the area to prevent injury from hot steam. If the cover sticks, use a wooden stick and mallet to carefully loosen the top. Do the same at the opposite wing nut so that the cover is raised evenly. In most cases, the cover should come off quite quickly. For additional assistance, check the advice on the metal-to-metal -metal seal maintenance instructions. Now you can remove the inner container from the sterilizer. Remember, it may be hot, so use pads if necessary. Unload the container. Place the load somewhere where it can cool down and any remaining moisture can evaporate. If you have used sterilization drums, make sure you close the band to reduce the risk of recontamination of the load. Check the autoclave tape for change of color. At this point, a responsible person signs for the release of the sterilized packs. And they are taken to the sterile storage area. If the sterilizer is not going to be used again, before putting it away, all water should be emptied from the unit and the unit thoroughly dried inside. It is recommended that the water is poured out of the unit when the base is still warm. 
The heat will help to dry the unit. Leave the cover off for 15 minutes. Depending on the quality of the water you're using, after a number of cycles a whitish deposit of lime and other minerals may begin to form on the bottom and sides of the sterilizer. This is known as scale. These mineral deposits impair proper heat transfer and may also cause deposits on the load. Clean off the mineral deposits using a stiff brush. You may have to repeat this procedure a few times to fully remove the mineral deposits. Read the manual for instructions on day-to-day -day maintenance. Once the sterilizer is clean and has dried, place the lid on the unit. For storage purposes, it's only necessary to slightly tighten the wing nuts, just enough to hold the cover on the base. During storage, it's recommended that the control valve is left in a vertical position, open, to allow air to circulate in the base. The doctors and health professionals in the theatre and other departments may be the ones treating the patients. But the health of the patient is also your responsibility.